Okay, I'm gonna flip the viewfinder so you can see yourself. Are you ready? You know what that scene reminds me of? Hmm. That scene from Gone Girl, the last scene. And, and we are expecting. We're gonna be parents. <laughs> <laughs> we are not. Have you seen 60 Minutes? Like yeah. The, the 60 Minutes interviews? 60 Minutes, rewind. Then our light is a lot more forgiving. Let's All right, go. let's go. How do we start? Um, my name is Dennis. If it wasn't already obvious, this is my significant other. Because Dennis's job and work life are completely different from mine, I thought it would be really interesting to sit down with him and talk about productivity and bullet journaling, how he keeps himself productive and gets the most done, and what are some of the hindrances to his productivity. Do you mind talking a little bit about what your day-to-day -day work is like? Um, I usually have to do either write, um, or I have to do experimental work, or I would have to plan my experiments and my projects, or I have to present. Um, so you do more creative work. And since I'm in the technical field, you kind of think that I do more technical stuff and the way I go about my day is very different. And that's a big misconception that in science you're very technical. I think what I think what I wanted to start with was I really liked how we had that conversation and at the end of it you look at me and you're like, huh. I didn't realize how similar we actually are, and that's something that really blew me out of the water. Because when you started talking about the way you like to structure your day, I just kept thinking, oh my god, that's exactly how I feel. Yeah, I think you just weren't realizing that the way we go about doing things on a day-to-day -day basis is very similar. Because you, you journal. Like, I know you keep a journal. You need to plan your projects because you need to really ask a question and you have a hypothesis and at the end of the day, you're trying to prove it or disprove it. And so how does bullet journaling, for example, helps you? So if I'm running a standard operation procedure, I would just have a list of things that I need to accomplish, which is somewhat similar to what you do. You spend a lot more time on making it look pretty though. And I <laughs> like that and it's very appealing. But for me, it's you just have a list of things and you kind of check them off, make sure that you're prepared for the day after. Or is the, it sort of like a ritual that you go through every day or is it different every day? I, love starting my days and I think I can't do it any other way. I love starting them by planning what needs to be done in a certain day because I know that I have that many hours to work on each individual project. Probably on Sunday I would sit down and figure out what I want to accomplish this week. A lot of what I use my journal for also is sketching and drawing ideas and that's where I think the creative component comes from because you do have to draw a lot and kind of sketch out ideas and try to understand how things connect and you can't really do it in, in, in a bullet format. You really have to understand more comprehensive like two-dimensional picture of things. Mm -hmm. There is some journaling that I do because it helps me set my mind in the right place or reflect on things that I have been doing. It's, it's almost like it's a next step after writing bullets because then you write a bullet and then you want to reflect on it and yeah, you, elaborate more. Right. Yeah. yeah. You don't really have a structured type of journal mm -hmm. where you like make layouts ahead of time and then fill them in. You sort of just have it free form. Yes, I like the flexibility of just having a lot of white space basically. I used to have a lot of planners that would tell me what I'm supposed to do on each day but it just it doesn't work for me like that. In a certain experiment I made, I've learned something, I figured something out. Now I might have to restructure something that I was originally planning and that was a plan that I was gonna do for for a quarter, two quarters, so. Yeah. And that's why I switched more to, I just have a, what do you call it, a line? Yeah, you just have, yeah, just like a lined notebook, basically. No. Yeah. This is a perfect testament to how I don't even know what I use. So yeah. Not, <laughs> well, I use the same one though. It's from Office Max. Right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> You know what you like. But like I feel like I went through iterations where I didn't know what kind of journal or planner I liked and most people I think like to buy the ones where it's very structured and there's like a layout where they give you a month and then you're supposed to fill out every day or they give you a set of lists that you're supposed to fill out but that almost just feels like you're like doing a job like oh I have to fill out this list. That's why a lot of people gravitate towards more adaptable journaling like bullet journaling because you're creating your own layouts and you're not sort of a slave to whatever system you purchase and it's like you can change it month to month. Even for creative people, you have to have some structure. You can't really go like on your day-to-day -day basis without having a certain level of structure. And yeah. there's the school of thought that technical people do things in a very structured way and they just need structure. And artistic people, 
they can't live with structure. And right. I think both of us are just a contradiction to that. But it's, I think it's a misconception because you do an incredible, you're incredibly organized and you do a very good job being disciplined and responsible and uh, very organized. But you're an artistic person and that's not something like a person would really expect out of you. They would expect you to be spontaneous. And for me, like you would expect me to use something that pre-dedicated things where I filled them right. out. But to that point, every person is a com needs a combination of the two. Like I like exercising or like more consistency with the way I, I eat, for example. I think maybe a good way to put it would be people who work in more creative jobs maybe like to create their own structure versus having a structure created for them that they follow because I agree with you in the sense that we both value having structure but maybe just not in the more traditional sense. It's not like I want to wake up every day and go, oh, what am I doing today? I want to know what I'm doing, but I want to be the one deciding when I'm going to do it, how long, and at what point in the day. Whether or not you are sort of creating the structure for yourself, or if you like it to already be there and you can sort of fit yourself into it. A lot of the times we would just talk together and I would talk to you about what happened in my day and like how I felt about it. I also think that sometimes when you and I have one-on-one -on -one conversations, it helps getting a second person's perspective. You, I think you're not so quick to give yourself credit in certain situations. I would sit in my head a lot and then try to come up with conclusions or an opinion and I would have one singular perspective, but then I would bring it up to you and say, hey, could you give me help with this? And I wouldn't necessarily be happy if you tell me right away, tell me that it's great because it's like, hmm, I'm skeptical. It's a small sample size. Right. You probably noticed that even if something good and happy happens to me, I don't let that consume me and get to me. I'm like, no, you don't. You don't like celebrate things hourly. It takes time for it to sink in for you. And, yeah. I just get excited. I'm just like, <laughs> I don't like to get excited and then be disappointed after it's good job. Move on to the next task. And that's how I really <laughs> haven't you heard of the, the saying it's like celebrate every tiny victory. <laughs> that's how I go about my day. Uh, what really sabotages me slowly, you can't really tell that it does, but over time it builds up when I just stop exercising and I just kind of start going low on sleep and just kind of work, 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 work. It seems like you're more productive that way because it, it's almost as if Because you have more time, yeah. but the time is not being used as effectively because you're not mentally there. Yeah. Okay, Dennis is going to fold over over here and collapse just because... I haven't slept enough, I, like, I haven't been taking care of myself, I haven't been kind to myself and my body and I haven't really been paying attention to things outside of what I've been doing. And yeah, now, I think you let that build up a lot more than I do. Yeah. If I have one bad day, I'll be like, okay, I need to take some time and like work on myself, like self-care. You are much more able to just kind of push your immediate feelings, sort of just like nudge it to the side and then you kind of just keep going until it almost gets to the point where you're like, whoa, I need to check in with myself, I haven't been. So I get in that state and I keep pushing myself, I'm not kind of myself, at the end of the day I collapse and then I sit down and I think, wow, you had it coming for you. Character differences is probably how we go about things. It's, you're smarter about it. You recognize that if you are, if you don't recognize that. <laughs> well, I mean, it's true. I think I'm just more selfish. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. I think I just love myself too much. I think I just have, a greater pain tolerance. Pain tolerance. Very good pain tolerance and spice tolerance too. <laughs> okay, I was just gonna talk about the video we're gonna film on Sunday and if we answered questions while we painted, like if people had questions, we could talk about them while we were painting. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Ask science related so, questions. So, yeah, you can ask <laughs> science related questions, Dennis can answer them. Or you can ask questions about art or anything. <laughs> okay, that's all. Hello camera friends. Wait, is it already filming? Yeah, it's going. Shoot. <laughs> Just gotta find your best angle. There's none. <laughs> okay, I have to blow my nose before we do this. Are you gonna change? No. <laughs> <laughs> How's my hair? 